Yo, what's up, everybody? It is your number one drama channel, Ojama Garrett's here with the drama. I'm here with the drama, and I wanted to talk about something that's super dramatic, super dramatic, super interesting, super really cool, super controversial. And that topic is um, dating. Dating wow. and relationships. And I have a super controversial take. Are you ready to hear it? That controversial take is that maybe you shouldn't fuck everyone. Maybe you shouldn't have sex with a bunch of people. Body count does matter when it comes to a lot of things, etc., etc. I think that keeping your virginity until you marry somebody is probably, and by probably I mean 100%, the best way to conduct yourself through life because it's only upside by remaining a virgin until you have sex with your partner. And, oh, even more, I think the first thing you should try to do um, when you're growing up as a teenager is determine whether you want a family or not. And if you want a family, the very first thing you should do is try to find somebody who is a suitable mate for you and marry them as soon as you can, whether that be 18 years old or whatever. I'm not, okay, I wouldn't say 16 because that's really weird. That's really weird. Not 16. Take that back. 18 years old. Date somebody in high school. Stay with them. Yeah, date somebody in high school. Freshman year. Boom. Courting. You know, you're courting people. And... You find your partner, or, you know, maybe it's not your time, maybe you wait, but you court, 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 date, 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 don't have sex, get married first, before everything else. Get married really young when you don't really know each other, that's what everybody says, you don't really know each other. It's like, yeah, bro, you, like, me personally, I spent most of my life not knowing who the fuck I am, until I've, like, suffered enough from my experiences of not sitting down to figure it out. That I finally regretted a lot of the decisions I made. And I was like, holy shit, if only I had done it this way, my life probably would have turned out. Because as soon as I stopped doing the things that weren't that way, and then did the thing I should have done from the start, all of a sudden, like magic, like magic, like magic, my life just started organizing itself. And I started building wealth, and I owned a house, and I had a lot of money saved up. And I was able to quit my job because I fucking hated it. But now I have a fucking bunch of money, and I don't have to work for six months if I don't want to. Wow, crazy, crazy, super controversial, super dramatic. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But anyway, yeah. So, order of events. More advice for the for the young me. For the young me I'd be talking to. Well, first off, don't watch porn. <laughs> don't watch porn. Don't masturbate. Everybody who says that shit's fine, it fucks you up, man. Masturbating fucks you up. There's something going on that we don't quite understand. There's some literature out there. Go look it up. Mirror neurons, pornography. Look it up. It fucks you up. It screws up the way. I mean, you've heard like the feminists... This is hilarious too. Political, political drama, political drama. Um, the feminists cried, cried very hard about like uh, pornography, and I, I'm sure they still do. Pornography and men objectifying women, only looking at them as meat, as sex objects, stuff like that, as a means to an end to get a nut, right? Oh, my camera's falling. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Okay, good shot still. Uh, then now they want to say like only fans and etc is like the most empowering thing you can do with your body and like having sex and like look at me look at my boobs look at my skin look at my nakedness it's empowering to like show your body off and make men objectify you like that's always been really funny but um that aside i don't really care about that that's just a side quest um to the men masturbating bad sexual encounters with people bad like this is gonna fly hard in the face of like commentators I look up to, like Destiny, for instance. He has a lot to say about this, but when you have sex with somebody, there's something that goes on, like a very major biological, like a spiritual thing, like a very serious thing happens. Okay? And then when you do that over and 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 I'm not talking about sexual encounters. I'm talking about masturbating and in sexual encounters, but masturbating is going to, that's the one that's going to be like high volume, high, high, uh, increased volume of this. It really just desensitizes that entire thing. So then like you get like, there's this huge gap between you and your partner that you're bonding with through the sexual experience. So then it becomes, in my opinion, why I think like destiny doesn't think sex is that big of a deal. It's because like when you numb yourself to it, like for instance, um, I lift weights, I'm huge, I'm swole, I can squat a lot, I can do a lot of pull-ups, whatever, you know, like, I've dug a lot of post holes, I've done, like, farm work and stuff like that. As I rub my hands, they get more calloused and get tougher, but then I lose a lot of sensation uh, in feeling. <laughs> and you've heard jokes about when you beat your meat, like, you can't fucking feel it or whatever, because you're, like, you're, you're, you're shaving everything off, like, sandpaper and stuff like that. Um, 
whoa, this is really weird. I can't believe I'm actually talking about this in front of strangers right now. But anyway, yeah. So that being said, the same thing happens when you're like having these sexual experiences. Um, you're just cheapening life. And uh, there's also a funny tangent to go along with that. Like uh, the comedian Chris Dilla, who isn't a funny stand-up artist. He's a funny podcaster. He's a funny guy. But I, I think his stand-up sucks. So super dramatic, super controversial. Um, but then also, he also, I remember when he talked about podcast experiences, I love people like Chris Dilla too. Like when they say this specifically, I don't do any of those drugs. Like I know that'll screw you up. But then they go out and like hook up with women. Like that's his hobby. You know, like, you know, the thing he got in trouble with for was inviting a bunch of 18 year olds to come over his house. And then he would give them a bunch of alcohol to like, relax them, make them sluttier so that he could have intercourse with a bunch of people. And that was like predatory or whatever he was doing, whatever everybody got mad at him for. But that aside, bad. That was bad. Okay. Well, I don't care. Anyway, everybody, from what I understand, it was weird. It was like creepy, but it was like consensual. So I don't think he technically did anything illegal. So there's not really much to say there. I'm not going to comment on that. What I am commenting on about is that like, it's funny that he says he doesn't do any drugs, but then spends a majority of his time doing drugs like when you have sex for the uh sec the part of the sexual experience is a drug experience like when they, that massive amount of dopamine that comes through you that is a drug experience so like when people chase women but they say they don't do drugs they're lying like if you masturbate and you say you don't do drugs you're lying you're 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 masturbating for the a drug effect you are in essence just doing drugs so stop it it's not good yeah i've really blown this one up and I'm not really sure where to go with it. So maybe I'll just like reiterate everything I can think of right now as advice. And my advice maybe to recap is that the first thing you should do is find a girlfriend, court her, find, you know, date a bunch of women. That doesn't mean have sex. Go on date, meet women, talk to them, find your mate, be explicit about I'm finding you to date, go, you know, hop on social media, whatever, you know, talk to a bunch of girls and talk to them. Just keep talking to them, keep meeting them, and then fall in love with one. After, you know, as you're doing this, you'll figure yourself out a lot where you like, where you, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of the dating is like you pretending to be a married couple without any of the, uh, the weight of it. You know what I mean? Like, when you start having sex, you start having kids, you start having bills, now you're complicating the situation. And dating is doing all that pretend it's like a game it's like marriage it's the marriage the video game or the whatever the the, the play pretend the role play and then you kind of just like you work it out okay i don't like this about women and they don't like this about me so i should work on this thing and then you're like through dating you're like sharpening yourself to be the best husband that you possibly can be so do that first find a partner somebody who will give you the the reason to keep going when you run out of reasons for yourself to keep going and the kids will help and the bills will help, but that marriage first is going to give you so much of an advantage over everybody else because it is going to be so much of a bigger reason for you to win. You know what I mean? Winners win because they have a reason to. Like, you're bored with it, like Kobe Bryant, like whatever his reason is, uh, but he was obsessed. He had a why. That's why he was the best. It wasn't necessarily because he... Yes, his genetics plays a factor. You could be this tall or this, like, but, you know, we're all born a certain way to be the best at the thing we're born to be the best at. You know what I mean? And marriage gives you a free incentive, a free push, because I never, ever, ever, ever would have pushed myself to be anything more than I am now until I, I met the love of my life and we had kids together and now I have this house. And that's why I'm even talking to strangers on the Internet, because I, I have a reason to win. So I'll outproduce people who don't, you know what I mean? Just innately. You may beat me because of skills and all this other stuff, but if you don't want it, I'll fucking get you, bro. And that's it. I think that's a good place to cut it off. Stop watching porn. Stop having sex. Get a girlfriend. Monogamy greater than polyamory. Polyamory. Drama. Channel. Out.